could you just give us a, a brief bio, a biography of yourself? For sure. people who may not be totally familiar with you. Right. Well, I was born and raised in Atlanta. I went to Shambly High School, which was a very diverse uh, high school, a blue collar area with strong middle uh, income families, I guess, and uh, then moved to Columbus in 1994. Uh, I practiced law for 16 years and also uh, worked for Midtown Inc. for several years as its executive director and um, been running for mayor since uh, roughly February, I guess, of 2010. And as of November 30th, um, I had the great honor of being mayor-elect for Columbus, Georgia. Um, as director of Midtown Inc., now we, I think most people here know it, it works to revitalize the central part of the city. Right. How do you see being mayor as a continuation of that? Well, I mean, it, it definitely, I guess, shaped my understanding of what the city was not doing well as far as planning and investment of taxpayer dollars related to infrastructure. Um, and it also uh, reaffirmed my thoughts that we were not maximizing um, our land mass resource um, or our infrastructure resource, frankly. Uh, so it is, I guess, a continuation as it relates to um, certainly planning, traffic transportation, uh, economic development, um, job creation predominantly related to retail and, and, and professional or business, uh, office business. Uh, type <clears throat> expansion and also, um, you know, governmental efficiency because I had to work as executive director. It was a quasi governmental organization in a way. It was nonprofit, but it was doing public work. And uh, I had to work with elected officials every day doing that. Yeah. I know that that's, you've got a lot of issues to deal with, but I think that's I mean, even our own city planning as we've surveyed. Yeah residents shows that was a great concern of theirs. Yes. Is the growth, the sprawl instead of growth inside the city. Yeah. As you know, a lot of that takes years to, to resolve. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, can you <clears throat> say what you think you can do as mayor that you couldn't do incrementally in the private sector doing that sort of thing? Well, uh, it's a tremendous difference. Um, and certainly I think I saw that as director of Midtown Inc. because there's only so much a private organization can do. Um, it, you know, it, you have to change the policy. You have to change the in, investment um, priorities for um, the city, but also for the private sector. And when there are market anomalies, of course, through development authority, tax abatements, you know, all sorts of creative financing, uh, you have to partner with the private market to make those things happen, or they won't. Um, so. Um, tell me again what your question was, Tim, because you, you had a very... <coughs> what do you see that you can accomplish more quickly or... Oh, as mayor yeah. Than as well, I think the, what, the point I was going to make, it, because you said quickly, and that's yeah. what caught my attention when, when you first asked the question, um, actually, cities can make a, a fairly quick turn, and you're right, when you start talking about changing cities' economic structures by investment, it's not something that's going to happen in a month. But I can tell you this, cities like Tampa, Florida, um, have changed in four years um, dramatically their economic vibrancy, uh, which has decreased crime by 50, 56 percent now. It was 50 percent in four years. After seven years, it's 56 percent decrease in crime um, and improved schools dramatically. So this makes a huge difference. And you, you know, you're talking about from the day you say this is something we're going to do and you get the buy-in of the private sector, which they're there. I mean, the private sector is ready to go with this. They just can't or have not heretofore had the buy-in from the municipality or the necessarily the leadership or the vision uh, for this particular thing from municipality. So I say once, once you hit the ground running on the subject, uh, you can talk about a you know, 24-month turnaround before you can start seeing you know, the construction, things actually going up and happening, the investment actually coming in and making a difference. So it's not that long term. Is there a particular place you see this happening first? Yes. I mean, well, you know, uh, South Columbus, and one of the reasons why I've talked about that so much on the campaign trail, is so ripe for this uh, because you have all that vacant and abandoned cheap land down there. And um, that's usually where these types of things happen. But because they're so economically distressed, they have you know, areas such as this, 
have um, stigma of crime, stigma of not having any economic um, viability. And so you have to come in. It, it is a huge partnership with the police department, the uh, you know municipality, otherwise than public safety, and also uh, with the private sector to get it done. Because the private sector can't do it alone, or they would have done it by now. Because the land prices are that low, um, and you you also have to be very careful. The reason why it takes a municipality is you have to be very careful not to run people out. Because there are really great neighborhoods in South Columbus that give Columbus a lot of character, a great sense of place, uh, the types of things tourists and other people would want to uh, not only come visit but live near. Um, and so you have to be careful that as you're developing you don't do it with sort of a steamroller effect. Um, it's more a surgical application of these types of economic development techniques. So it's not something you can do um, haphazardly. It takes a lot of planning and precision to get it done right. Are there success stories you would cite? Yeah, well, I mean, I think a lot of communities have done them. Um, no, I mean here. Oh, here. Yeah. Well, you know, of course, uh, I think Uptown is, is sort of the classic example of taking a small area and planning. Um, but I still think, and, and I believe the people with the, the bid would tell you, that they're ready for the next phase of that now. They've done a great deal, but there's so much more they can do and really have to do if they want to keep this area uh, vibrant and relevant in, in today's world. And so it's, it's a huge success story. I think Midtown, although it's, it's relatively new um, and, and much larger than downtown, much more diverse um, with various neighborhoods, than our downtown area, but I think it's a success story too. It's been marketed, branded. Um, you really see that area turning around significantly. All right, as you mentioned, crime is, or at least the stigma of crime, yeah. and, and, and the reality of crime really, are significant issues here. Yes. Sometimes that's a perception. Sometimes yeah. it's, as we know, it's quite real yeah. in mm -hmm. some areas. How do you see, what are, what are your ideas for fighting crime? Yeah. Well, anytime you go to fight crime, you have to do it three ways, and law enforcement is just one, one facet of that. And so, yes, we need more police officers, and we've gone a long way toward doing that. We need more resources for enforcement, and we have that now with the lost. So I think that's a huge success story, and Columbus can uh, almost check that box. I think we've still got some work to do, but we're, we're a long way towards checking that box. But it's not going to do any good to have that fully funded and, and resourced if we're not dealing with these huge areas of economic um, distress that we have in our community, huge areas of poverty, because I don't care where a large area of poverty is, uh, whether it's in Cleveland or, or, or Columbus, it is uh, going to be where your crime's coming from, uh, because there'll be no opportunities there, very few opportunities there. Um, and so when you start looking at economic redevelopment and fighting crime, you have to start looking at bringing investment back because it creates jobs, it builds um, a well-netted, well-woven community. People begin to care about what their neighbors are doing. They begin to, um, to feel that they belong. And crime begins to decrease dramatically. And then the third aspect of it, of course, is um, prevention, which predominantly focuses on youth because youth offenders are where you can nip it in the bud. Um, because they have not yet become uh, invested in a life of crime. And so if you can find productive activity, something that gives them identity and a place in the community, they'll take it. And so you have to look at things like successful after-school programs. Uh, you have to look at having um, fully staffed, fully equipped rec centers that are embedded in the communities because kids don't make appointments to go play, as I've said a hundred times during this election process. Um, it, it has to be near their communities. And those are in very small investments that pay huge dividends in fighting crime. We're very concerned with violent crime uh, because we've had these series of murders. And people say, well, what can we do to prevent crime, uh, violent crime, murders particularly? Well, the fact of the matter is, as Chief Bourne will tell you, it's very difficult to prevent a murder because they're usually an act of passion, and by that I don't necessarily mean a relationship or domestic dispute, which is, you know, certainly an, an aspect of, of murders, but they're usually something like great fear because they're robbing a place and they're startled and they had a gun and they shoot because of this 
fear they have or somebody shooting somebody who's intruded in their home. But in any event, those are usually um, uh, the culmination of an escalation of criminal behavior. And so if you want to prevent a murder, you've got to back it way up. Uh, you've got to start um, affecting, um, you know, smash and grabs, burglaries, drugs, you know, drug deals gone bad. Um, this, you know, sort of um, territorial, whether you call it gang or not, but sort of this territorial us versus them that arises when large groups of people, particularly young people, are engaged in criminal activity and they begin to shoot or declare as an enemy another group of individuals that they see as vying for their livelihood and crime. And, uh, and so you have to start prevent, you have to start um, finding other alternative life courses for those individuals and that's not going to happen the day before the murder occurs, it's going to happen years before the murder occurs.